So in this video we want to obtain the derivative of the exponential function e to the x and the derivative of the natural logarithm, in other words the derivative of the logarithm with respect to base e, from first principles. So let's recall this is the definition of a derivative, it's a limiting procedure. You take the function evaluated at x plus delta, subtract from it the function evaluated at x, and you divide this difference by delta, and you take the limit as delta approaches zero, to obtain the derivative. And we're also here going to use this definition of the base e. So e is defined to be this number. It is the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n, all raised to the power n. So let's investigate this a little more, and to do that I'll make some room. So what I'd like to do now is explore this value e for some different values of n. So let's start at the lowest possible value, n is 1. So with this, for n is 1, we would obtain that e is approximately, and this is obviously far from the limit, n going to infinity, 1 plus 1 divided by 1 here, which is 1, all raised to the power 1, so that's 2 to the 1, so that's just 2. What about n being 2? That's a slightly better approximation. Well, if n is 2, we're going to get that n is approximately 1 plus a half, all squared. So 1 plus a half is 3 halves, so we have 3 halves, all squared. So that's 9 divided by 4, so that's 2.25. And we can see that this is increasing, and if we were to take, say, n to be approximately well, to take n to be exactly 100, we would have that e was approximately 1 plus 1 over 100, all to the power of 100, and that works out to be approximately 2.704. And what we can see is that this is you know, getting larger, and it is approaching the, the value for e, but it's converging extremely slowly. And what we find, if we are... Um, patient and put larger and larger values in is that e approaches the following value so e is approximately 2.71828 and it carries on it has infinitely many decimal places they do not repeat it is an irrational number so this number is a very special and very important number and the reason it is so important is because of its derivative property so what we now want to do is to obtain the derivative property, and I'm going to do that on the next slide. So what I've written here are the two formulae that we're going to need, our definition of the derivative as a limiting procedure, and also the definition of e again as a limit. This is the special number. So what we want to now look at is the derivative with respect to x of e to the x, and this is going to be the limit. As delta approaches 0, all I'm doing is writing this out with our function being e to the x. So in the numerator we're going to have e to the x plus delta. That's the function evaluated at x plus delta, minus e to the x, all divided by delta. And using the rules for powers here, we see that here we have a common factor of e to the x. So we can write this as the limit as delta approaches 0 of e to the x multiplying e to the delta minus 1 all divided by delta. So you can see that I've been able to extract the x dependence here. This does not depend in any way on delta so I can pull it through here and then we have this limit. And what I want to do is I want to show that the limit as delta approaches 0 of e to the delta minus 1, all divided by delta, is actually 1. And that is this key property that the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So let me just uh, pause and make a little bit of room. So what we want to do now is we want to show... that the limit as delta approaches 0 
of e to the delta minus 1 all divided by delta is equal to 1. And what I'm going to do now is I want to substitute into here what e is equal to. So let me just pause and make this statement here that what we want to show, make this a bit smaller. So I want to calculate this structure here in the limit as delta goes to naught, inserting this definition of e. So let's consider the limit as delta goes to naught, and in e we have an n, we're interested in n approaching infinity. There is a power of 1 over delta, so I'm just going to write that outside. It's 1 over delta, multiplying everything, so I'll open brackets. And then e is 1 plus 1 over n, all to the power of n. And then this has to be raised to the power of delta. So this is all going to be multiplied by itself to the power of delta. So I just put a delta here. And then I have to not forget to subtract a 1 from it. So I subtract 1. And what we now want to do is to show that in this limit, as delta goes to naught and n goes to infinity, this approaches 1. And the way I'm going to do that is by saying, let us consider that there is a relationship between n and delta. So let n be 1 over delta. And if I do that, then just by rearranging it, delta is 1 over n. So 1 over n is delta, which we're going to need for here, and clearly n times delta is equal to 1, just by multiplying both sides here by delta. So that's what I'm going to need to put in, and I'm going to be substituting these into this expression here. And remember, we're not interested in specific values of n or delta, we're interested in what happens as delta approaches naught and as n approaches infinity. And it's clear as delta approaches naught, 1 over delta approaches infinity, so n will approach infinity in this way. So let me pause and make a bit of room. So if we now substitute these choices into here, what we are going to obtain is that we have the limit as delta approaches 0, which is going to be taking n to infinity from this, of 1 over delta, multiplying, now it's 1 plus 1 over n, but that's 1 plus delta. It's all to the power of n times delta, but n times delta is 1, and I don't need to write a 1 here, and then we subtract a 1 from it. And you can see if you expand this, you have 1 plus delta minus 1, the 1's cancel, and we are left with the limit as delta approaches 0 of delta over delta, the deltas cancel, we're left with 1, and that is our answer as delta approaches naught. 1, of course, remains at 1. So we can see that this structure that we want to calculate has a limit of 1. Now, I can imagine that perhaps you're feeling a little bit uncomfortable about choosing this. So what I'd like to do is to at least argue that there is some more robustness in this, and I'd like to make a different link between n and delta, which still has the limit that delta approaches naught and n approaches infinity, and we will still see that we get 1. So let me pause and make some room. So alternatively, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say or n is not 1 over delta, but 2 over delta, and that means that 1 over n is delta divided by 2, and it means that n times delta is equal to 2. So therefore, this limit that we're interested in is going to be the limit as delta approaches 0, which from here still means that n will be approaching infinity. And this is of 1 over delta, that's the factor here, times 1 plus 1 over n, we've now said, is delta over 2. And this is now all squared, because n times delta is 2. And then we subtract a 1 from it. So what we now have to do is we take the limit as delta approaches 0, 1 over delta, brackets. We expand 
this factor here. So we're going to get 1 plus, and we're going to get 2 cross terms, so delta over 2 times 2, so that's just times plus delta, the 2 cancels, plus delta over 2 all squared, so that's plus delta squared over 4 minus 1 close brackets. And if we look at this, we can see that the 1s will cancel. We're then going to be able to cancel a power of delta. So the delta here will cancel with this and leave us with a power of 1. And then in this term, when we cancel the delta on the bottom with the delta here, it will reduce that power from 2 to 1. And now we can see as delta goes to naught, we have 1 plus delta over 4, which is going to, as delta goes to naught, is going to just give us, again, 1. So we can see that this is at least a somewhat robust answer, and one can be more rigorous, of course. But this is going to be enough for the level of this video. So what we've seen on this slide is that the limit as delta approaches 0 of this factor is 1, so therefore the derivative of e to the x is e to the x multiplied by 1, so the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And that is the reason why this special number e occurs in so many applications of mathematics in a vast number of fields. And what I now want to do on the next slide is to look at the derivative of the logarithm to the base e. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to calculate the derivative of the natural logarithm of x, where the natural logarithm of x means the logarithm to the base e of x, where e is our special number, and we're going to need this property of logarithms in a moment, and of course we're going to need our definition of the derivative. So what we're going to have is that the derivative with respect to x of the natural logarithm of x, and I'm not going to write a modular sign, I'm going to be assuming for simplicity that x is positive here, so I'll just write it one last time as a modulus here. The derivative of the logarithm of x is the limit as delta approaches 0 of the logarithm of x plus delta minus the logarithm of x, all divided by delta. And now I can use this property of logarithms here to write this as the limit as delta approaches 0, all over delta, of the logarithm of, and now it's going to be x plus delta divided by x, and x plus delta divided by x is 1 plus delta over x. So it's 1 plus delta divided by x, close brackets. So at this stage, what I want to do is I want to write this in a slightly different way. I'm going to write this as the limit as delta goes to 0. I'm going to take my 1 over delta outside, but I'm also going to put a 1 over x out in the front. And if I'm going to do that, if I'm going to put a 1 over x here, I clearly have to put an x in the numerator here as well. And this multiplies the logarithm of 1 plus delta over x. So all I've done is I've just inserted by hand um, a factor of 1, 1 over x, multiplying an x. Now, the reason why I've done this is I'm trying to write this part of it here in a way which is going to give me the natural logarithm of e. And the natural logarithm of e is 1 in the same way that the logarithm to the base 10 of 10 is 1, or the logarithm to the base 2 of 2 is 1. So, what we can now do is we can use another rule of logarithms, that if you have something multiplying a logarithm, you can bring this in and raise the power of the argument to this number here. So I'm going to say that what we have is the limit as delta approaches 0, 
of 1 over x multiplied by the logarithm of 1 plus delta over x all to the power of x over delta. Now, at this stage, what I want to do is I want to say what happens as delta approaches 0. Well, as delta approaches 0, this power is going to become very large, and this number here that we're adding to the 1 is going to become very small. So, in just the same way as before, I can say, let me define x over delta to be n, and then here we're going to have 1 plus 1 over n, and in that way we're going to get an e. So let me just pause and make some room. So let x over delta be n, so therefore delta over x is 1 over n. So therefore, going back to our derivative, the derivative with respect to x of the natural logarithm of x is going to be, well we have this factor of 1 over x, so I'll just write it out front, because it doesn't depend upon delta, multiplying the limit, and now we've replaced delta by n, so as delta approaches naught, looking at this, n is going to be approaching infinity. Remember, I'm assuming that x is positive here, so we have a positive number divided by something which is very, very small, and also positive, so it's going to be very large. So we have the limit here as n approaches infinity of the natural logarithm, the logarithm to the base e, of 1 plus 1 over n all to the n. So this is 1 over x multiplied by, and now we recognize that this is indeed just our definition of e in the limit as n approaches infinity. So it is 1 over x times the natural logarithm of e, and by definition the natural logarithm of e is 1, because it just means the logarithm to the base e, so this is therefore going to be 1 over x. So this is the result that we were trying to get, the derivative of the natural logarithm of x, and in general it's the natural logarithm of the modulus of x, is 1 over x. And if you'd like to, I would encourage you to consider making this perhaps a slightly more robust argument. You could say that inserted in here there was a factor of 2 perhaps, and again you can just trace it through and see how you still get the same result. And I'm going to stop this video here.